Chapter 12. The Umbral. After receiving such valuable explanations, my desire to increase my knowledge regarding the various issues that Lysias had raised became stronger. His references to the spirits in the umbral had aroused my curiosity. The lack of religious preparation while I was on the earth troubled me greatly here. What might the umbral be? I only knew about the ideas of hell and purgatory from sermons at the Roman Catholic masses I had attended in obeying social protocol. About this umbral, however, I had never heard a word. When I saw my benevolent attendant again, I couldn't help ask him a lot of questions about it. Lysias listened carefully and then replied, Well, well, you stayed there for so long and you still don't understand that realm? I recalled my past suffering and felt myself shuddering in dread. The umbral begins within the earth's crust, he obligingly continued. It is a zone of darkness for those who, while on earth, were not resolute in following the path of their sacred duties in order to fulfill them. Instead, they lingered in the valley of indecision or in the swamp of numerous wrongdoings. When spirits reincarnate, they promise to fulfill a plan of service assigned to them by the Father. However, when they recommence their experience on the planet, they find it very difficult to keep their word and only seek what will satisfy their own selfish ends. Thus they hold on to the same hatred for their enemies and the same passion for their friends. But hatred is not justice, nor is passion love. Everything excessive and useless damages the economy of life. After death, all these multitudes of spiritually unbalanced entities remain in the misty regions, which are imbued with corporeal energies. A duty fulfilled is a gateway through which we pass into the infinite on our way to the sacred continent of union with the Lord. It is natural, therefore, that those who neglect their rightful obligations should have that blessing postponed indefinitely. Lysias noticed I was having a hard time understanding the full content of his lesson due to my almost total ignorance of spiritual principles. Thus, he tried to make it clearer. Imagine that when we reincarnate, each of us is wearing a dirty garment that must be washed in the waters of human life. This dirty garment is our causal body, woven by our own hands during past lives. As we share in the blessings of a new earthly opportunity once more, we usually forget our essential purpose. Instead of purifying ourselves through the effort of the cleansing process, we become even more soiled by going deeper into debt and thus imprisoning ourselves in genuine slavery. Now, if we return to the world seeking a way to rid ourselves of our impurities because they are out of harmony with a higher plane, how can we expect to enter this fear of light in an even worse state than before? Therefore, the umbral is a region intended for the flushing away of negative mental residues. It is a sort of purgatorial zone where one gradually burns off the refuse of the bulk of illusions acquired after having degraded the sublime opportunity of an earthly life. The image could not have been clearer or more convincing. There was no way to disguise my justifiable wonder. Understanding how beneficial his explanations were, Lysias continued, The umbral is a region of profound importance for those still on earth, for it embodies everything that is useless to the more highly evolved life. Consider how wisely divine providence has acted in allowing the creation of such a zone around the planet. There are legions of irresolute and ignorant souls who are not wicked enough to be relegated to colonies of the most dolorous expiation, nor are they sufficiently virtuous to be admitted to the higher planes. They represent the ranks of inhabitants in the umbral, and they are close companions of incarnate human beings, separate from them only by vibratory laws. 
It's no wonder, therefore, that such a place is characterized by large disturbances. There, rebellious spirits of all kinds are grouped together. They form invisible cells of extraordinary power due to the concentration of their common tendencies and desires. Don't many people on earth become desperate when the postman doesn't show up or when the train doesn't appear? Well, the umbral is full of such desperate beings. Since they don't find the Lord ready to satisfy their every whim after the death of their physical bodies, and having realized that the crown of life eternal is non-transferable glory for those who work with the Father, these creatures show themselves as they truly are, wasting their time on useless endeavors. Asolar is also a spirit society, but its cells are formed differently from those in the umbral, where different types of unfortunate, idle, and criminal entities form groups. It is a region of executioners and victims, of exploiters and exploited. I took advantage of a spontaneous pause and exclaimed, highly impressed. What do you mean? So there is no kind of defense or organization there? My attendant smiled and explained, Organization is an attribute of organized spirits. What do you expect? The lower zone to which we are referring is like a home where there is no food. Everyone whines and no one is responsible. The absent-minded traveler misses the train. The farmer who does not sow cannot reap. However, there is only one thing I can say for sure. Even in the darkness and anguish of the umbral, Divine watch care is never lacking. Each spirit remains there just as long as is absolutely necessary, and that is why the Lord has permitted the establishment of many colonies like this one, devoted to useful work and spiritual aid. So it would seem, I remarked, that the, that sphere nearly blends in with the sphere of incarnates. Yes, confirmed my devoted friend, and it is that region to where the invisible wires extend that connect human minds to one another. The place is full of disincarnate spirits and thought forms of incarnate ones, because in reality every spirit, wherever it may be, is a radiating nucleus of forces which create, transform, or destroy, and which are exteriorized as vibrations that earthbound science cannot understand at the moment. Whenever we are in the process of thinking, we are doing something elsewhere at the same time. It is through their thoughts that human beings find in the umbral fellow spirits whose tendencies harmonize with their own, 